Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to the correct views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks on go to the Media Speaks .com and click on uh, And of course, we are brought to you by the Arcadia Grill in Canton, Ohio. Other correct uses. Um, friends, do me a favor. Make sure you hit subscribe and make sure you hit like. Do you know I did an entire Fukushima update and I got complaints on the quality of the camera? The HD camera is needing attention and this camera is going to have to work until it gets said attention. So I mean, you can donate to me at the correct views of hotmail.com and any money you give to me goes to a better show. This is your show. I'm just somebody who talks. That's it. This is your show. I give you news and information that you can't get anywhere else. I give you commentary and insight. Support me, friends. Hit share. Hit like. Uh, let people know what you what you heard from the show. Uh, don't leave dislikes because you don't like the camera. Ridiculous. All right, uh, webpronews.com. Fukushima radiation, a homeless to clean up. Um, this is particularly disgusting. I'm going to go and do a little bit of a history lesson here as I do my uh, little mini Fukushima update here. Thank you, by the way, to all of you that watched the last video. Um, during the uh, closing uh, area times of World War II, the Japanese government did something particularly disgusting. Um, they had children, sometimes not even fully clothed, mining uranium so that they could support fascist Hitler and uh, blow us all up. Um, that is one of the most despicable things I've ever heard of a nature and a culture doing to its own people. Sending children to mine uranium. And they, they fully knew the, the dangers of it. They're doing it again. The Japanese government really is becoming as poisonous and as evil and as venomous as they were in World War II when they were supporting Hitler. A man named Siji Sasa is on a mission recruiting homeless people from, Sen from the Sendai train station to labor on the worst job in the world, cleaning up the nuclear waste at Fukushima. He'd have been right at home in a Nazi concentration camp, just herding the Jews right in. According to Sasa, the homeless people in the train station are potential laborers that can dispatch to contractors in Japan's nuclear disaster zone for a bounty of $100 a head. How much was Hitler paying per uh, Jew turned over? I, 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 do you see it, people? Do you see it? It's right in front of you. This is how labor recruiters like me come in every day, Sasa says, as he poisons his own people, as he strides past men sleeping on cardboard and clutching at their coats against the early winter cold. Yeah, it used to be that you tried to feed the homeless, that you tried to make sure they didn't freeze to death, that you, uh, among the ones that were not uh, too mentally damaged, you would try to give them life skills. No, none of that. Right now, you send them to work in an area that should be evacuated. That's good. Cleaning up industrial radioactive fallout is the most undesirable job in the world. If you think I'm making this up, friends, look up uh, Ch Chernobyl's uh, runners. And it seems the only way to find people willing to work for a minimum wage is to go out and recruit the homeless. After all, they don't have much else to do. Maybe you should pay more than minimum wage. How can you stop this? You watching this? You can stop by not buying General Electric. Buy GE nothing ever. Um, get your money out of mutual funds and stocks that have General Electric in it. Put them in a mutual fund that has to do with infrastructure if you have to, but avoid anything that has GE. To destroy GE is to cut the head off the snake, to quote an Alex Jones show I listened to earlier. But when the March 2011 earthquake hit, followed by a massive tsunami that leveled villages across Japan's west coast, it began the next hazardous disaster, the multiple meltdowns at the Fukushima plant. It says they're dealing with it three years later, obviously. 
In October, homeless men were rounded up at Sendai's train station by Sasa, then put to work clearing radioactive soil and debris in Fukushima City for less than minimum wage, according to police and accounts of those involved. The men were reported up through a chain of three other companies to Abashi, Japan's second largest construction company. Yet where people who buy kitty porn often pay the pornographer too. This guy should get the same kind of treatment that they would. They are just as scummy as child molesters. Who rounds up people that don't even know any better and say, hey, I'm going to give you some money. Come, come do this. And then you completely destroy them for life. This is a modern day World War II Nazi. Now the Japanese mob is being charged with illegally accessing the construction giant Abashi Corp's network of decontamination subcontractors and illegally sending workers to the government-funded project. Um, that's part of the, uh, the mob over there. Well, you expect the mob to be made up of scum. There's no surprise there. It says a large number of the homeless people recruited are not even being paid minimum wage. And the TEPCO takes out fees for their food and their lodging. They should be paying these people $1,000 a day. Easy. Easy. They will never have a good life after being at this plant. Their DNA is forever destroyed. Their heart is messed up. They will have cancers. You're giving them what? There are people that are saying, you know, we want to go back to our home. And that's pissing me off, too. Get it through your heads! You're never going back home! The half-life of uranium is like 247 million years, okay? You're not going home! So quit saying it! Idiot, idiot, idiot! Uh, Infowars, Steve Watson, Oklahoma lawmaker, pushes bill to stop ludicrous gun-related suspensions in schools. This is great news. An Oklahoma state representative, someone with a brain in his head, introduced a bill this week that would see protections put into place to prevent schools from punishing students who bring with them small toy guns or objects resembling or depicting guns. A spate of incidents in the last year in schools, and we've reported on many of them here, across the country has led to children being suspended or expelled for such ludicrous things as biting food into the shape of a gun or simply using their hands to make a gun gesture. Representative Sally Kern hopes that her bill, HB 2351, dubbed as the Common Sense Zero Tolerance Act, will prevent such incidents from taking place in her state. God bless this woman. Specific actions protected under the legislation would include brandishing a pastry or other food that is partially consumed in such a way that it resembles a weapon, Possession of a toy weapon, which is five inches or less. Possession of a toy weapon with a plastic or wood snap together building box. Using a finger or a hand to stimulate a weapon. Vocalizing imaginary firearms or munitions. Wearing articles of clothing or accessories that support or advance the Second Amendment rights and organizations. God bless her. Keep in mind, our country is so idiotic at this point that we have to tie up an action, the, the, the Congress and make laws for something like this. Let's remember that the right to have a gun didn't come from the government. The right to have a gun came from God. It is a God-given right. We need to build rights. The bill also protects students who use objects such as a pencil to stimulate a gun, as well as protecting those who draw pictures of firearms, military vehicles, aircraft, or any other object that can be deemed to protect un uh, constitutional freedoms. Support it. Oklahoma's got the right idea here. Uh, vitamin D deficiency linked to depression, pain, inflammatory bowel disease, and breast cancer. Mercola from uh, Dr. Mercola. Friends, this is good news. Okay, we have good news incoming here on the correct views. Um, it mentions, I'm going to skip through some of this, that, you know, many, almost all of us are vitamin D deficient. Those of us who live in the land of ice and snow, like I do, are more vitamin D deficient. I take it every single day. And uh, these are some of the things it's found to help. Vitamin D deficiency affects gene activity. Um... When you have your vitamin D levels fine, these are just some of the things that will improve. 
pregnancy outcome. Uh, it also reduces the risk of cesarean section and preeclampsia. A type 1 and type 2 diabetes, it's not just caused by sugar and high fructose corn syrup, it's also caused by a lack of vitamin D. Heart disease and stroke, autism, Alzheimer's, and other brain dysfunctions, uh, coconut is also, uh, coconut oil is very important to consume. And uh, bacterial and viral infections will get better. Uh, it says some of the most recently published studies, which I'll review here, demonstrate vitamin D can improve many things such as diabetes, breast cancer, and Crohn's disease. Um, I was, uh, my, my ex had, a, had an issue with Crohn's disease and she was on every pill known to man. She had like 13 surgeries in this uh, decade. Uh, most of those were in a three or four year period. I've realized that Medicine is not the answer to Crohn's disease. A natural, a naturopathic care is the cure for Crohn's disease. You're told that Crohn's disease has no cure. Well, that in many instances simply is not true. While previous research has associated low vitamin D levels with an increased risk of Crohn's disease and shown that correcting your vitamin D deficiency can improve symptoms of the disease, one of the most recent studies found a significant interaction between vitamin D levels and Crohn's disease susceptibility, susceptibility, easy for me to say, as well as a significant association between vitamin D levels and genotype. Serum vitamin D levels were also found to be significant lower, significantly lower in patients with Crohn's disease. One of the seven DNA sequence variations examined for effects Two variants showed a significant association with vitamin D levels in those with Crohn's, and four variants were associated with vitamin D levels among controls. In short, vitamin D can affect genetic expression associated with Crohn's. Now, I know what I'm talking about here. I, I was with this person for a very long time, and I told them to take vitamin D. I told them to do a number of things that they didn't do and now the calcium uh, deficiency in this person's body has destroyed it and she sneezes and breaks a bone. She's not, she's not even 45 yet. When I tell you something, I'm not just saying it into the camera for the sake of hearing myself speak. Listen to me and your life will be healthier and better. That's what I'm trying to do because I care about humanity. I care about you. Vitamin D may reduce depression and pain. In related news, vitamin D supplementation has been found to reduce both depression and pain in diabetic women. Uh, the investigators set out to determine how the D supplement might affect women in type 2 diabetes who are also, also suffering from depression. At the beginning of the study, 61% of women reported neuropathic pain, as such as shooting or burning pain in their legs, feet, and 74% had sensory pain such as numbness or tingling in their hands, fingers, and legs. My friend Glenn deals with this. Shout out to Cosmo Transportation. During the course of the study, the participants took 50,000 IU vitamin D2 supplements every week for two months. By the end of the study, the women's depression levels had significantly improved following the supplementation. Furthermore, patients who suffered from neuropathic and or sensory pain that goes on at the beginning of the study reported that these symptoms decreased at three and six months following the D2 supplementation. Um, you want to take vitamin D3 instead of vitamin D2. Uh, and one of the reasons is, it says, a, uh, according to the 2012 meta-analysis by Cochrane Database, which assessed more at mortality rates for people who supplemented their diets with D2 versus those who did with D3, there are significant differences in the outcome of the two. The analysis of 50 randomized controlled studies, which included a total of 94,000 participants, showed, one, a 6% relative risk reduction among those who used vitamin D3, a 2% relative risk uh, increase among those who used vitamin D2. So the vitamin D3 is the way to go here. Why? Cut your breast cancer risk with vitamin D, cancer surgeon suggests. Says a uh, Science World Report highlighted the recommendation by British breast cancer surgeon, say Matatas, Professor Kifa Mokmo, who urges women to take vitamin D supplements to cut their risk of breast cancer. Professor Robo has also requested Jeremy Hunt, the health secretary, to take vitamin to make vitamin D pills freely available 
as this would result in saving 1,000 lives annually. I am calling for all women from the ages of 20 to be given vitamin, free vitamin D supplements on the NHS because of its effect in protecting against breast cancer. Uh, I'm all for that. Why? Because it's a lot, I mean, if our government's going to do it anyway, it's a lot cheaper to give somebody vitamin D and a lot more humane to make sure they keep their breasts intact than it is for us to pay to have those beautiful things cut away because they're vitamin D deficient. So we're saving money and we're doing the right thing. Vitamin D is critical for cancer prevention. Um, it has been known to help pancreatic, lung, ovarian, breast, prostate, and skin cancers. In 07, a study published by the American Journal of Preventive Medicine, yet another source, concluded a serum 25 OHD level of more than 33 in GML was associated with a 50% lower risk of colorectal cancer. Friends, go to the article. There's even more in here. I, again, I, I notice I'm not selling anything. I never told you what kind of vitamin D3 to buy. Buy any kind that you want. It's incredibly cheap, and I'm not getting paid to say this. I'm doing it because it is the correct views. Friends, I want to go ahead and invite you to go to the Arcadia Grill. Why? Because if you're in Canton, Ohio, sooner or later you're going to get hungry. And when you do, you don't even want to drive down. It's not that far from Cleveland. Go to the Arcadia Grill. Tell them Sam sent you. Um, they have a Saturday and Sunday breakfast and a full-service bar. Their breakfast food is amazing. It's delicious. When you go there, you're going to be treated well. You're going to have good food at a fair price. You might have the best drink you've ever had made. For those of you that like cocktails like I do, um, go there and maybe get a rum and coke. Or why don't you try a rusty nail? Nobody makes better drinks and has better food than the Arcadia Grill. Um, guys, I got a few more things that, that I do want to get to here. Ex NSA boss, Fourth Amendment dispensable in post 9 11 world. For you weekend fans, uh, that means he wants to get rid of your right not to have your stuff gone through. Kurt Nemo, Infowars.com, the former boss of the CIA and the NSA, retired General Michael Hayden tells the USA Today that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights impede the smooth functioning of a Stasi police state. He said the NSA should not be required to seek court warrants and a widespread surveillance. That's worse news than a new Kelly Rowland record, and I wouldn't think anything could be worse. Right now, since there have been no abuses and almost all the court decisions on this program have held that it's constitutional, I don't really know what the problem we're trying to solve by changing how we do this. Well, it's constitutional. The people that are uh, um, making the laws unconstitutional to start with. We all know what Jefferson said about that. Um, Hayden sidestepped the ruling of the U.S. District Court Judge Richard Leon, as Hitler used to do when he wanted to push laws through. Uh, Judge Richard Leon issued it earlier this month. Uh, a Bush appointee said... The almost Orwellian technology that enables the government to store and analyze the phone metadata of every telephone user in the United States is unlike anything that could have been conceived in 1979 when the case of Smith v. Maryland, presented before the Supreme Court, permitted the government to collect data without a court warrant. So uh, Richard Leone doesn't seem to think it's very constitutional, Mr. Hayden. He says the notion that the government could collect similar data on hundreds of millions of people and retain that data for a five-year period, updating it with new data every day in perpetuity, was at its best in 1979 in the stuff of science fiction. Goes on, for the government and its intelligence apparatus, so-called metadata is only a Stasi state baby step. Michael Morrell, a former acting director of the CIA and member of the task force, has recommended expanding the massive surveillance program to include email. Never get enough of spying. What part of God-given right to your Fourth Amendment is not understood here? It does not say a Michael Morrell-given right. It does not say a right given to me from Hayden doesn't even say a right given to me by my government. It is from God, whether my government likes it or not. They need to keep their damn nose out of my email. I would argue, actually, that the email data is probably more valuable than the telephone data, he said last week. 
He believes listening in on telephone calls and reading the email of Americans will prevent a, another 9-11. Yeah, of course it would. Uh, and then so might uh, not letting um, illegal uh, people into the country and into flight schools. So uh, might be not having dinner with uh, Osama bin Laden shortly before the attack. Think I'm making it? Look it up. He hated the Pentagon. Prior to the ruling by the U.S. District Judge William Paley on December 23rd, stating that the NSA's rampant violations of the Fourth Amendment are legal, Jeffrey Stone, a University of Chicago law professor who is a member of the White House panel established to investigate NSA violations, unearthed by the whistleblower Edward Snowden, he's a hero, said evidence that massive surveillance prevents terrorist attacks is very thin. Hayden said Snowden stirred up the crowd, as he should have, with his revelations about the NSA, and Obama will need to show some political courage in order to keep doing these things. No, what he needs to do is quit doing them. So, I mean, I, there you go. There's some enemies. You want to know who the enemy is? Who is they? They want to take your rights. Morrell, Hayden, uh, the NSA, that's who they is. Um, guys, this is also from the, uh, no, this is from the economic collapse. Michael Snyder. Is America about to reach a breaking point? Anger grows as unemployment benefits get cut. In America today, there are close to 50 million people living in poverty, and there are more than 100 million people that get money from the federal government every month. As the middle class disintegrates, poverty is climbing to unprecedented levels. There's a link for that. Even though the stock market has been setting record high after record high, the amount of anger and frustration boiling just under the surface in our nation grows with each passing day. And now extended unemployment benefits have been cut off for 1.3 million unemployed Americans. And it is being projected that a total of 5 million unemployed Americans will lose their benefits by the end of 2014. Now, I know, and this is one of the areas where Rand Paul was wrong, Paul. Um, there are those that believe that cutting the unemployment will prevent workers from being picky as to what job they take. The problem is that we have outsourced all of our good jobs, and there aren't any jobs. There is no opportunity in America anymore. And the solution is to tax the living hell out of any American country, company that wants to bring their goods from another country into ours and to tax the living hell out of any country, company that wants to leave the nation to have jobs in other countries. That is the solution. And don't give me that's not very libertarian BS. Bollocks. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the libertarian ideal does not work when you're working with dictators who are not working with the libertarian ideal. And libertarianism works within the borders here. This notion that we can deal fairly with people like China is a lie. That is a correct view. It says that if you think the title of this article is alarmist, you probably have not been paying attention to what has been happening in the past few weeks. For example, a 600-person brawl broke out in a movie theater in Jacksonville, Florida just the other day. That is exactly why you might want to have a, a weapon that has a lot of cartridge, uh, space, a lot of bullet space in it. Because if 600 people are fighting on Christmas night, you might need to defend yourself with more than 10 bullets. Five teenagers were arrested when a 600-person brawl broke out in Florida's movie theater's parking lot on Christmas night. Described by police as a melee, the fight occurred around 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday outside the Hollywood River City 14 movie theater in Jackoffville when a group tried to storm the theater's doors without purchasing tickets, police said. Several had rushed an off-duty police officer working as a security guard. The officer administered pepper spray to disperse the group, locked the doors, and called for backup following protocol. Um, again, um, flash mobs are going to be the reason that we need to have. My dad, God rest his soul, used to say, what use do you have for an automatic or fully automatic weapon? I mean, a reason incoming. A flash mob of 400 crazed teens was so violent that it forced the mall in Brooklyn to shut down just a few days ago. Um, again, do you want to open up an automatic weapons fire in a mall? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, 
when these bastards get sick of breaking into malls to steal things, they're going to come in groups of 30 and 40 people at your house. Do you want to have 10 bullets in your gun? I don't think so. A wild flash mob stormed and trashed at Brooklyn Mall, causing so much chaos that the shopping center was forced to close during post-Christmas sales, sources said Friday. That's what happens when you send all the jobs away. More than 400 crazed teens who mistakenly thought that the rapper and rather talentless Fabulous would perform. That would give me a reason to leave. He sucks. Erupted into brawls all over King's Plaza Shopping Center in Mill Basin on Thursday, 5 p.m., sources said. Uh, well, you know, you'd have to be an idiot to like Fabulous. You'd have to be an idiot to fight that an idiot wasn't playing. The troublemakers looted and ransacked several stores as panic shoppers ran for the exits and clerks scrambled to close down mall gates. Um, and there's other stories on this over and over and over. But what you got to realize is this. It says that most of our politicians appear to believe the lie that we're in an employment recovery. Friends, your average person today is making with inflation what they made in 1989. If I'm not mistaken, things have gone up a little bit since 1989. Guys, go to that article. It is, again, is America, um, let me get the whole name of it for you. Is America about to, at a breaking point, anger grows as unemployment benefits get cut? Um, but we need to, we need, we, we can get the jobs back. It's a matter of using our tax laws correctly. Guys, uh, shockmansion.com, the last thing I'm going to get to. This is the only thing that could make me a trendy. Um, it, really, it is. The, 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 I'm going to go out and get the newest. Not me. I, I'll leave it to the Lady Gaga idiots of the world. It's not me. However, I would be such a trendy for this. Video shows the first flying car is finally here. Goes on sale 2015. Can take off vertically in a traffic jam. The first flying car is... <coughs> And we mentioned this some on the Media Speaks last Saturday show. They're set to go on sale to the public as early as 2015. Terrafugia has announced its transition design, which is part sedan, part private jet with two seats, four wheels, and wings that fold up so you can be driving it like a car. It'll be on sale in less than two years. The Massachusetts-based firm has also unveiled plans for a TFX model that will be small enough to fit into a garage and won't need a runway to take off. Would you buy one? Hell yes, I'd buy one. Um, go look at the video. The best part of it isn't in the little blurb I read you. The best part of it is that you're not going to need a pilot's license to operate it. What you're going to have to do is make sure that the government doesn't step in and ruin this for everyone, and mass disobedience is the way to make that happen. Um, it flies itself with GPS. You put in where you want to go, it takes off and flies there. In the event that your engine dies or some bonehead on the ground shoots at you while you're flying in it, you can pull a level, lever, le lever and a parachute deploys. And the GPS will steer, steer the parachute down away from houses and swimming pools and whatnot. How good can life get, people? Uh, Shockmansion.com, flying car, go look it up. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks and signing off. Go to the mediaspeaks.com and look at the work of Kyle Corp D. Lake and myself. We're always posting videos and articles and links to important information, especially if you're on our Facebook. Um, please donate to the show if you can, especially if you're one of those people that are more concerned about what camera I'm using than the news I'm giving. All money that you give to me goes towards a better show, better gear, more information more often. The ultimate goal is to make this my job, and I would do it. I would do this every day and give you news every day, one step at a time, people, and those steps involve you helping. Good night, God bless, and thanks for listening to The Correct.